हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अवर वेबसाइट ऑटोमेशन कम्युनिटी डॉट कॉम टूडे वी विल सी सीक्वेंस ऑपरेशन ऑफ न्यूमेटिक सिलेंडर्स यूजिंग पीएलसी तो अवर टुडे टास्क इज टू डेवलप अ पीएलसी प्रोग्राम दैट विल ऑपरेट द न्यूमेटिक सिलेंडर्स इन डिजायर्ड सीक्वेंस सो फ्रेंड्स एक्चुअली इन द इंडस्ट्री अ पर्टिक्युलर मशीन कंजिस्ट सिवरल नंबर ऑफ न्यूमेटिक और हाइड्रोलिक सिलेंडर्स which operates in desired sequence based on process so for study purpose we have selected one random sequence over here and we have assumed that time between each steps is 3 seconds so before moving ahead let me tell you something about pneumatic cylinders so first of all compressed air from compressor comes to solenoid valve so solenoid valve has two connections one electrical connections to make it on and off and other is air connections so it has one input and two output lines which are connected to these holes you can see over here so if the solenoid valve is operated by giving it supply then it will release air to this position so this cylinder has the piston which will move upward like this now as long as there is electrical supply in the solenoid valve the air will continue to supply in this cylinder and it will remain in this position as soon as we will cut off the supply of solenoid valve air supply to lower connection is removed and air will flow from this position so this cylinder will retract back to this original position and become like this so this was all about the basics of pneumatic cylinders solenoid valve now let us understand our desired sequence so as soon as the start button is pressed first of all what should happen cylinder 1 should advance so as you can see over here this is the our first step and here all the cylinders are in retract position and as mentioned here cylinder 1 is in advance position it has moved from here to here now in the second step of that means after 3 seconds what should happen cylinder 1 should retract and cylinder 3 should advance so you can see over here cylinder 1 has come back to its original position and 3 has advanced from its original position to upward like this now again it will remain in this state for 3 seconds again after 3 seconds what should happen cylinder 2 should advance and cylinder 5 also advance so we can see over here he was already in on position as i told you earlier as long as the supply to the solenoid valve will be available it will remain in this position in the third step what we have done we have advanced cylinder 2 and 5 so you can see over here so at this moment total 3 cylinders will be in advance position now what is the fourth step cylinder 2 should retract and cylinder 4 should advance so you can see over here this is the step 4 in which cylinder 2 has retract and come back to original position and cylinder 4 has advance you can see over here in the third step cylinder 4 was in this position now it has advance like this so right now 3 4 and 5 are in advance position again should happen now 3 and 5 both should retract so you can see over here from this position to this position 3 and 5 have retract and came back to their original position and right now only cylinder 4 is in advance position this step cylinder 6 should advance and cylinder 4 should retract so let us see that this is the last stage where you can see cylinder 4 has retracted and you can see over here it has retracted and at this moment cylinder 6 has advance you can see first cylinder 6 was in this state and now it is in this state so here all the six stages are completed and now what should happen now 
cylinder 6 should retract and sequence should repeat. So, you can see over here when the cylinder 6 will retract, all the cylinders will be in retract position that is in downward position. So, it will come to this state that is all cylinders are in retract position and from now it will repeat this sequence like this cylinder 1 in advanced position. So, in this way these cylinders will advance and retract as per this sequence until we press the stop button. Let us now understand the wiring required for this project. First of all, we will understand the input wiring. As you remember, we have only two inputs to start and stop the process. So, first of all, we will connect ground terminal of SMPS to the source sink of input. Now, we will take 24 volt supply from here and connect it to one terminal of start button and stop button. Now, another terminal of start button we will connect it to x0 position and another terminal of stop button we will connect it to x1 position. So friends you have to remember that in later programming we will use x0 for starting the process and x1 for stopping the process. So this is all about our input wiring. Now let us understand our output wiring. So we have used 6 solenoid valves. So here SV means solenoid valves. So, for 6 cylinders, we will use 6 solenoid valves like this. First of all, we will take 24 volt supply and connect it to one terminal of each solenoid valve like this. Solenoid valve is just a coil which has two terminals. So, at one terminal, we will connect 24 volt supply to each solenoid valve. Now, another terminal of solenoid valve we will connect it to y0 position for solenoid valve 1. Similarly, we will connect another terminal of solenoid valve 2 to y1, another terminal of solenoid valve 3 to y2 position. Similarly, for this we will use y3 output, for this I will use y4 output and for this we will use y5 output. So, here we have used Y0 to Y5 that are 6 outputs. Also, we have to connect all these common terminals to ground of SMPS. So, this was all about wiring of our PLC. Now, let us understand the logic required to create this project. First of all, if the start button is pressed, we have to turn on one timer T0 with the preset value of 3 seconds. because we want 3 seconds of delay between each operation. So now it will count up to 3 seconds and when the value of timer will become 3 seconds, this T0 bit will become on and it will reset itself so that it can restart its counting from 0 to 3 seconds for another step. When this bit becomes high, that means on, we want to give rising pulse to our counter. So, what this function will do? It will give rising pulse to counter at every 3 seconds. Initially, the value of C0 will be 0. So, every time we will compare the value of counter. If the value of counter is 0, that is initial condition, it will set Y0. So, cylinder 1 will advance. Now, it will remain in this state for 3 seconds. After 3 seconds, here it will get rising pulse and the value of counter will become 1. So, we will compare. If it is equal to 1, it will set Y2 that means cylinder 3 will advance and reset Y0. So, cylinder 1 will retract. Again, it will wait for 3 seconds. After 3 seconds, the value of counter will increase to 2 and we will compare. If value of counter is equal to 2, it will set Y1 and Y4. So, cylinder 2 and cylinder 5 will advance. If you are getting confused over here, you can see over here, cylinder 2 is connected to Y1, cylinder 5 is connected to Y4. It is decreased by one number. As you can see over here, we have 6 outputs from Y0. So, for 1, we have to use 
zero, two, we have to use one, likewise this. So coming back to here, if the value of C0 is equal to 3, it will set Y3, that means cylinder 4 will advance and reset Y1, so cylinder 2 will retract. So on, when the value of counter becomes 4, it will reset Y2 and Y4, that means cylinder 3 and 5 will retract back to original position. Finally, when the value of C0 becomes 5, it will set Y5, that means cylinder 6 will advance and reset Y3, so cylinder 4 will retract. And finally, when the value of C0 becomes 6, it will reset itself, so that the value of C0 becomes 0 and it can repeat all this sequence. Also here we will reset Y5, so that cylinder 6 comes to original position. Now, if the user press the stop button, we will use zone reset function to reset all the outputs, so all cylinders coming back to retract position. This was all about the logic. Let us start our programming. So we will open our ISPSoft software from here. Click on the new file. Write the name of our project. Click OK. Now we will write device comment from here. Double click over it and this box will open. So we have used two inputs start and stop. Now click on output buttons. So from Y0 to Y5 we have used, this will be our SV1 that is solenoid valve 1 and so on. I will write all the output names, 6 solenoid valves for 6 cylinders. Now click on timers, we have used timer T0, so here I will write, so here I will just write timer only and here we will use counter, okay. Now close this box, click on programs file, right click over it and click on new file and just click ok over here. Let us maximize this, let us write a network comment over here. So oh, here I am going to use start button and one internal relay to start the process. So let us select contact from here, output coil from here. Now give address to this as x0, press enter and here we will write m0. Now double click over here and select set. So what will happen when the user will press and release this start button, this M0 will be set. That means this bit will keep our process on. So now insert a network from here. What we want now, if the process is on, then start the timer. So again press enter, select contact from here, give its address as M0 and press enter. So if the process is on, our timer should start and run up to preset value. So for that go to functions block, select all types and write over here TMR, this is the mnemonics for timer and click on insert button. So here first we have to write the timer number, so here we will write T0, here we have to write its preset value. So here I will write 30, 30 means 3 seconds over here. Now insert a network from here and write a network comment over here to counter, press enter. So when timer will complete its 3 seconds, here 
it will give pulse to counter. So select a contact from here and insert here. Write its address as T0, press enter and double click over it because we want to give rising edge pulse. So from here select the rising edge to 1. Now select over here, go to functions block, select all types and write over here C and T. This is the mnemonics for counter and click insert. So our counter is created. Here in the S1 first, we have to write the address of our counter that is counter C0 that we are going to use. And here we will write its preset value that up to which it should count. So we want to count up to 6 for 6 states are there. Now again insert a network from here. Finally when this is completing its timing, we want to reset this so it can again start counting 3 seconds from beginning. So we need to reset timer from itself only. So select contact from here and one output coil also. Now write its address T0 and here also T0. Now double click over here and select reset because we want to reset the timer. Now again insert a network from here. Now our first step will start. So here I am giving step 1 in network comment, press enter. So what is the first step? If the system is on, we need to check the value of counter. If the value of counter is 0, that means that is the step 1 and in the step 1, our cylinder 1 should advance. That means we have to on the Y0 output. So select contact from here. Give its address M0 because if this is on, it means the system is on. Now select over here, go to functions block, click comparison instruction and select equal to function and insert. So here we have to write two values which we want to compare. So here I will write C0. We want to compare the value of counters 0 and here I will write 0 initially its value will be 0. So if whenever the counter value is 0, this condition will be true and whatever I will write over here that will be executed. So these steps I am going to repeat for another 6 times. So right now I am just copy paste it by control C and control V. So you can see over here I have copy paste it. Now back to our step 1 that is the first position. So if the counter value is 0 what should happen? Cylinder 1 should advance. So select a coil from here and write its address as Y0 because this is our cylinder 1. You can see solenoid valve 1. What we want to do? We want to set this. So double click over it and select set scroll down and here change it to step 2 ok here also we will write 1 this is for 0 now we will go to condition when c0 equals to 1 select over here if this condition is true then what should happen cylinder 3 should advance and cylinder 1 should retract so Again select a output coil from here. This time there are two outputs. So click two times over here. You can see two outputs are created. Now select pointer. First we will close the solenoid valve 1. So cylinder 1 will retract. So right over here Y0. Double click over here and select reset. So this will retract the cylinder 1 because solenoid valve 1 is off. Now right over here Y2 this is where we have connected solenoid valve 3 of cylinder 3. We want to advance this that means we have to own this. So double click over here and select set. So cylinder 3 will advance and cylinder 1 will retract. Now coming over here 
write over here step 3 here we will write 2 now again after 3 seconds its value will increase and when the counter value is 2 what should happen so select over here again we want two outputs so select coil from here and click two times select pointer now we want to advance cylinder 2 that we have connected at y1 and here we will select set and here i will write y4 because we want to advance cylinder number 5 and again here we will select set so this is our step 3 now let's move forward let's change over here this is our step 4 so when and here also we will write 3 so after this it will wait for 3 seconds and the counter value is increased to 3 so if the value of counter becomes equals to 3 here what we want to do we want to advance cylinder number 4 and retract cylinder number 2 so again we will require two outputs first of all here i will write y1 it should be resetted and here i will write y3 that is my cylinder 4 this should be advanced so here i will select set forward this is my step 5 here we will write 4 so after this it will wait for 3 seconds and then value of counter will increase to 4 and if the value of counter becomes 4 then here what should happen cylinder number 3 and 5 both should retract so again i need two outputs this time both outputs should be resetted so here i will write y2 for cylinder 3 and y4 for cylinder 5 and here i will select reset and forward here i will write step 6 press enter now here when the value of counter becomes equals to 5 what should happen select over here cylinder 6 should advance and cylinder 4 should retract so again i will require two outputs first of all i will write y3 over here for cylinder 4 and y5 over here for cylinder 6 cylinder 4 should retract so here i will reset the coil and cylinder 6 should advance so here i will set the coil our six steps are completed as discussed in logic now what we want to do when the value of counter becomes 6 it should reset itself so that this process should start from beginning and repeat itself so again insert a network from here or uh, we just want to copy this box so select this and copy paste this and here i will write as step 7 here i will write 6 now here what i want to do first of all let me delete this first of all i want to reset counter so select coil from here over here c0 and here i will select reset so when our counting is completed it will reset itself and start from beginning what else we want here we have on our cylinder 6 that means cylinder 6 in advanced position so before starting our sequence from beginning we have to reset this cylinder 6 so again select coil from here name it as y5 for cylinder 6 and also here we will select reset so now it will first of all reset this solenoid wheel for cylinder 6 and then repeat the process from this position finally what we want to do stop the process if the user presses the stop button process should stop so to stop the process here you can see 
everywhere we have used m0 bit so first of all we have to remove this m0 bit then this timer will stop and it will stop giving pulse to this counter besides that here you can see we have used set command over set command in all the outputs so what will happen even if you off this bit it will remain in set condition so we also have to zone reset this outputs so here first of all draw a stop button here we will write x1 so if this button is pressed what should happen so first of all we have to reset this m0 bit okay so select coil from here name it as m0 and double click over it to select reset beside this as i said we have to zone reset this outputs so from here go to functions block select all types and write over here zrst and select insert so here we have to write the range so first of all the starting position is y0 and the ending position is y5 so anything between y0 and y5 is on that will be resetted by this command so this is all about the programming of control of pneumatic cylinders using plc its hmi designing and simulation we will see in next part of this video if you want to learn more examples like this just like and subscribe our youtube channel automationcommunity.com